One of my fondest memories is sitting in a little church in Phoenix, Arizona, Pueblo, sitting there with my grandmother and her little tambourine, my tambourine, and we just, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? And how can I forget how you set me free? Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Amen. Memory is such a very, very precious, very precious thing. And I'm reminded how um, precious, how important it is uh, by a conversation that, that uh, I, I saw on Facebook uh, with a dear sister who was helping a, a, a couple, a man and his wife. And the wife uh, was, was in the early stages of Alzheimer's or dementia. And so she was forgetting who he was. And, and she was trying to call the police because she thought he was trying to kidnap her. And, uh, but she had forgotten who he was, that he was not an enemy. He was not a threat. He, she could not remember that he was her husband, that he was her lover, that he was her friend. And that's what communion does. That's what the Lord's Supper, if you will, does for us. It calls us to, or he calls us to remember. Jesus calls us, Yeshua calls us to remember. I'm your husband. Remember, I'm your friend. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Remember that. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. The Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread because he didn't want you to forget the meaning of that night, the marvel of that night, the mystery of that night, the promise of that night. And when he had given thanks, let's, let's just give thanks right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this bread, which symbolizes and represents to us the bread of life that came down from heaven. You are that bread and you have given us. You are our manna, the Messiah. Thank you for being that bread, the bread of life. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And I should have warned you at the beginning of the video, but if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and get your bread and your wine or your grape juice and, 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 and then Catch up with this right here. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
You know, I, I looked up that word remembrance uh, in, in the Greek, and it is the word from the Strong's 364. And it's spelled A-N-A-M-N-E-S-I-S. -E and when you write that word out, if you write that word out, you can see the word, the English word that you and I are very familiar with. The word amnesia. And so what Jesus is saying us, saying to us is, don't get amnesia. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament This cup, excuse me, is the new covenant in my blood. You and I are part of a blood covenant. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, we would still be in our sins. For God did not redeem us or purchase us with the blood of bulls and of goats, as Peter would say, but the precious blood of the Lamb of God, without spot, without blemish. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Don't get amnesia. Don't forget about my blood. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Every time we do this, we proclaim what? The Lord's death. We proclaim that he did not, as far as I'm concerned, as far as we're concerned, that he did not die in vain, but he died that those who live might not long, no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died. And we say, we proclaim that. We, we proclaimed it yesterday and the day before, and we're still proclaiming it. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. We remember. We remember that. We come to the table dressed not in our righteousness, but in his righteousness, covered with his blood, believing and knowing that if we try to hide our sins, it's useless. But if we are faithful to confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive them. So we come, not groveling, not fearful, but faithfully come, like he is faithful. And we love him because he first loved us. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But we ought to be examining ourselves now, in the light of his love, in the light of his mercy, in the light of his grace, in the light of his kindness, examine yourself in the light of his soon coming. This is a serious Time. But if we judged ourselves, but verse 30, I'm sorry, for this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. The Corinthian believers was not taking remembering seriously. And he says there's a lot of sickness spiritually and physically 
and even death because you don't remember. But if we judged ourselves rightly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined. Whom the Lord loves, he just disciplines. By the Lord, in order that we may not be condemned along with the world. In order that we might not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home so that you may not come together for judgment. And the remaining matters I shall arrange when I come. This do in remembrance of me. How sad, how tragic it is not to remember those closest to you, to forget the name of your husband or your wife, your friend and your family. I can't think of anything more tragic, anything more horrible than to be stripped of the precious memories, unseen angels sent from somewhere to our souls. Precious memories, the hymn says, how they linger. And this is one of the most precious memories that should linger. This do in remembrance of me. Don't forget my love. Don't forget my mercy. Don't forget my kindness. For as often as we eat this bread, often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show, we do proclaim, we do say, he's coming. I believe it. And I'm going to keep on believing it until he comes. Here's to eternity, beloved. Just waiting now on his promise that he made to us. That while we are gathered together doing this, what he is looking forward to is when he'll drink it new with us at the wedding feast, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's the club.